All right, action. Lights. Camera. Music. One, two, two, two. When a customer comes calling and you find him and crawling, don't lose the chance to say that you're here to really help him and you want to make him welcome. Don't let your man get away. Cut. Cut. Hey, girls, this isn't your scene. We're shooting the service department sequence right now. But you called music, Mr. LaFarge. I heard you. Didn't he, Gwen? Yeah. Yes, girls, but that's to set the scene for the service department, where Tony comes in to get his thousand-mile checkup. Now, you girls be good kids and go sit over in the corner until I call you. Okay? Okay. Gee, Gwen, I don't think he'll ever get around to us. I'm exhausted even before I begin. Mm, me too. Hey, look, Winnie, who's playing the service manager, Rod Thorling. Sure like to bring my car into him. Now, Rod, as you know, the theme of the film is service customer follow-up, how to keep customers happy and coming back. This involves handling customers right at the 1,000-mile inspection, using service customer comment cards, and 30, 60, 90-day follow-up. And, of course, personal contact on delinquent customers, those who haven't been back. Mm-hmm. You'll see these ideas developed as we shoot the various scenes. Okay. Now, in this first scene, you, Rod, the service manager, greet Tony as he brings in his car for his thousand-mile checkup. Okay? Yep. All right. Let's go. Hello, Mr. Johnson. Here for your thousand-mile checkup. Glad to see you. No, 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 Rod. You've got to be more enthusiastic. Remember, this is your first crack at getting Tony as a regular customer. You've got to really make him think you're glad to see him. First impressions are lasting impressions. And if you don't sell your customer when you first have him, you'll lose him. Now, if you were a real service manager, Rod, you'd know that. Parts and service are a stable part of a dealership's business. Car sales may go up and down, but there's always parts and service to keep a place going. And it's the job of the service manager to hold on to his customers. Okay, let's try it again. Glad to see you. Ah, that's more like it. Okay, Rod, go on. How's the car running? Oh, just great. Oh, there's a few minor things, but nothing serious, I don't think. Well, our boys will make these adjustments in no time as they go over your car. Be sure to mention them to the write-up man when he takes care of you, though. Oh, there's no charge connected with them, is there? Not on a thousand-mile checkup. Your car's under warranty until you go 4,000 miles or 90 days, whichever comes first. As I told you when we delivered the car... All you'll be charged for is the new filter element and the oil change. Cut. And you know, Rod, you must be just as friendly and enthusiastic to the used car owner as to the new one. As a service customer, he is just as important. In fact, more important. Now, in this scene, you welcome a recent used car buyer. He's coming in for a check on little noise he hears in the engine. He's called the salesman who delivered the car to him two weeks ago, and he suggested he bring it in to you. This is your opportunity to really sell him on coming to you for service. You will notice in the script, you stress the fact that your shop is conveniently located and that your prices are competitive. That's to keep him from going to the corner service station with his troubles. Okay, let's shoot the scene. We can't. You can't shoot? Why not? We can't find Charlie. He's a used car owner. He went out for coffee and we don't know where he went. Coffee? You let him go out for coffee? Well, what do we got here, a ladies' afternoon tea? We're supposed to be shooting a picture. Well, Rod, I guess there's nothing for us to do but to go to that scene where you're talking to Tony. Okay. He's now had the car about five months, and he's come to pick it up after you've serviced it. Your car's all set, Mr. Johnson. You've noticed I hung a card on your dash. That's our service comment card. After you've driven the car a couple of days... We'd appreciate your sending it back to us with your comments on the work. Be glad to. Oh, where do I pay for the work? First time I've had to pay, you know. Cashier's office is right over there. Uh, while you're paying your bill, I'll see that your car is brought in. Cut. Now, Rob, we set the stage for the scene where you've received the return postcard from Tony. These comment cards are very important, 
as they let a dealership know from day to day what customers think about their work. Let's start as you're reading Tony's comments. Work on the car was fine. Price is much too high for work done, though. Think I'll take car someplace else hereafter. Cut! Ah, what a weak excuse. Writer! Hey, where's the writer? Here I am. What's the matter? What'd you put such a phony excuse in the script for? Price is much too high. Who'd go for that as legit? That's what all the service managers told me. I talked to a lot and they all said price was the biggest complaint. Here, I'll play a tape and prove it to you. Listen. I think it's just purely that uh, people do not realize how much everything costs today. Well, if he has agreed to have a few other things done, it isn't long before his bill is way up. And basically, that's what the people complain about is money. And listen to this one. Now, I would say uh, 85% of them, it's a misunderstanding where people pay more money than they felt they should have. But after you talk to them and explain it to them, then they see the light and then they're satisfied. See? That's what the men say. Well, it may be true, but you'd think as a writer you could think up something more ingenious than that. Well, I guess we'll have to play it as it's in the script, Rod. Now, you go to the phone and call Tony. And remember, this is an important call. Customer comment cards are only as valuable as the action taken. The way you justify the charges for this work is going to determine whether or not you hold on to this customer. So be smooth. Right. Hello, Mr. Johnson. This is the service manager at Hometown Ford. I'm calling about your comments on the card you so nicely returned. Out of my way, out of my way. Gotta get this wall in here. What the... Hey, you stagehands! What are you doing breaking into a scene like this? We was told to set up this scene here at 2 o'clock. It's 2 o'clock. We're setting it up. But we're not ready for it. We're running behind schedule. Sorry, mister. Rules, you know. Two o'clock set up. Okay. We set up. Oh, no. Well, all right. Let's play the scene in that set. Now, this is where we go into the use of the follow-up cards. Where's the girl who plays with you, Rod? Hey, girl. Here I am, Mr. Lafarge. Good. Now we can shoot a scene. We'll rehearse it first. Now, honey... You play the girl who keeps the 30, 60, 90 day follow up system. Like the service comment cards, this follow up plays a very essential part in maintaining a close relationship between the dealership and its service customers. Here's your files. In these drawers, you'll see all your folders where you keep customers' repair orders and make your notations as to how you're following up. You have to work regularly at this system every day, otherwise, it's not worth anything. These are the cards you send out to those who haven't been in for 30 days. The second pile is for the people who've been missing 60 days. And the third pile is letters we send out to 90-day truants. It's a simple, uncomplicated system. In fact, many dealerships have high school girls operating the service customer follow-up. And yet, this matter of following up service customers is the most important part of this entire film. Because follow-up cards and letters keep the dealership's name in front of customers and remind them of what the service department can do for them. We've got to get it across just right. Well, Mr. Lafarge, if this customer follow-up system is that important, let me review it quickly so there's no mistake. First, I just file the customer's repair order in his specific folder after each day's business. And then these folders are filed alphabetically. Then every day, I review all these files to see what customer may not... No, no, you don't review all these files every day. I'm sorry I forgot to mention that the entire set of alphabetical files are equally divided by the number of working days in each month. Uh, let's say there are 22 working days in July, for example. And you have 850 customer folders in your files. That would mean you'd only review approximately 39 folders each working day. Oh, I see. Actually, I'll be reviewing only a few each day, but each customer's file every 30 days. That's right. Now, what do you do with the files? 
Well, I'll look for the date on the latest customer repair order in that file. If it's 30 days old, I'll send the customer this 30-day follow-up card. If the latest repair order is 60 days old, I'll send out one of these 60-day follow-up cards. And, of course, I'd send a letter to those who are 90 days overdue. Good. Excellent. Then whenever I make a mailing, I make a note on the front of the folder. Like, for example, 7-15, a 60-day card was sent out. That way I'll always know what has been done to get this customer back. Yes, that's right. But also, this folder will make a complete file on the dealership service relationship with the customer. And perhaps even more important, it'll be a valuable merchandising tool when the customer's car is traded in. Well, finally, when I send out the 90-day letters, I also turn the files on these 90-day delinquents over to the service manager so he can personally contact the customer. Right? Right. You can see this follow-up is so simple to operate. Yet, it provides a systematic method for keeping in close contact with service customers and keeping them coming back. Now, honey, to make sure we're all zeroed in on this scene, would you please go over the script once more while I rehearse Rod in this other sequence? All right. Rod, let's do that scene where you're trying to get the customer back who hasn't been in for 90 days. You're on the phone out beside the bulletin board, which is loaded with service comments from customers praising our service. The customer's over here on his phone. Okay? Gotcha. All right? Let's go. We haven't seen you in over 90 days. We like to keep our customers, and we were wondering what we've done wrong that would keep you from bringing your car into us. What you've done? Holy cow, I wouldn't bring my car to your place if there was no other service garage for 100 miles. Why do you know that the last time my car was in your place, my wife brought it in, and some wise service writer took advantage of her ignorance and delivered the car back to her without doing half the things I had asked for. What the hell kind of a place? Cut! Cut! Writer, we can't put swear words in this picture. The censors, you know. Well, I've done it when something like this happened to me personally. Well, we can't. This is a Ford picture, you know. Take it out and write in something else, quick. Oh, what a day. Actors disappear, scenes get moved in on me, writers mess up my script, and... And those chorus girls. Oh, why did I ever become a director? Hey, you dames, you might as well take over. I'm going to go look for a job in a Ford dealership. When a customer comes calling, make him think you're enthralling before he's inclined to stray. For that thousand mile inspection, don't overlook defection. Oh, don't let your man get away. When you find he's not returning and your follow up system churning to your cards, he still says nay. When you hit one, Too frequent, there is never a sequence. So hard.